cool. We're rolling. This is the second take. Um, hello, everyone. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, we'll be going into how I solved 949 leak code problems in 2024 and applied to zero jobs. So here's why. So this is my current split between easy, medium, and hard. Um, it's very imbalanced with it skewing towards a lot of easy problems. I need to solve more hard, but we can get into that a little bit later. Uh, this is the video roadmap. Uh, we'll be going through my background, my Lico journey, um, going through the problem breakdown set. Uh, we'll also be covering my Lico addiction story, how I stayed motivated this entire time, my rationale behind applying to zero jobs, and ultimately the resources that helped me along this Lico journey. After that, we'll be going into our biggest takeaways and what's next after doing all this leak code. All right, so this is my background. Um, my name is Kai. I'm 22 years old. I'm an aspiring mountaineering photographer. I want to pursue adventure photography like Jimmy Chin um, or pursue documentary or pursue YouTube, something along the lines of that. Uh, I currently attend Wharton. I'm a senior right now where I'm studying finance and computer science. Um, specifically, I am concentrating in finance, business analytics, as well as minors in computer science and data science. So it's not necessarily two degrees, but I like to say I'm doing finance and CS for like just to make it more simplified. Um, yeah, so in so for 2025 September, I'll be going to Nepal to pursue mountaineering photography, as well as trying to start an outdoor year company. These are very ambitious goals, um, and we'll see if I can achieve them. But Ultimately, this would, be, this would be my dream occupation, uh, not necessarily investment banking or software engineering or consulting or quant. I want to pursue photography and I want to make money while doing this. So yeah, and this is my LinkedIn profile at the bottom right here just to provide more legitimacy to who I am. So my Leco journey. Um, I started my Leco account in November 2022 when I was a college sophomore. So I graduate 2025, so 2021 to 2022 would be yeah, my sophomore year. Um, I didn't really solve that many problems in 2022 or 2023. I just dabbled here and there, um, never built that consistency, and honestly, never was interested in lead code, because like after all, my main degree was finance and economics. So what was the point of lead code? Anyways, after taking a uh, my data structures and algorithms class, um, I think I got to enjoy lead code a lot more or just um, the problem approaches and just solving these problems. They seem like very fun puzzles. So for my junior to senior year um, in 2024, I ended up solving 949 problems at a pretty consistent pace. So I didn't get a submission in every single day. Um, so it was like range like, I guess, no submissions to maybe one or two to at sometimes 30 submissions in one day. Um, the most notable times being January during winter break. Uh, March, I was getting sort of obsessed with it. April and April to May was the time of like midterms and final exams. So I didn't really get that much time to do it. But then June to September mainly, that was um, during, you know, during the summer. So I had more time to solve these problems. And then with October and September, with September and October coming around, that was when school started back again, I would solve problems while in class. Um, and then I got, I hit my 1000 total solved a milestone at around December. So I kind of laxed off of that. And I'm now getting more into mountaineering photography or preparing for all of that. So yeah, this is my current 2024 rewind, a little screenshot here. Um, just to provide more proof of this, I ended up solving 520 easy problems, 396 medium, and 33 hard problems, um, which is a total of 949 questions solved in the year 2024. So this puts me at a 99.8 percentile of total lead coders. So I guess that's pretty good. Um, the one complaint would be, if anyone's looking at this, they would be like, what the heck, Kai, like you solved so many easy you solved over 500 easy problems and so few hard like why did you do that i'm not gonna lie i just did these problems for fun i wasn't really prepping for any interview or um like specific like training regime for lead code i just did whatever i felt like doing which ended up being more of the easy and medium problems 
So now we'll go into my leak code addiction story. Um, I think during the summer, I just got so into leak code that there were times where I would wake up at 3 a.m., like in the middle of the night, and I would just have the urge to solve problems. It got so bad. Um, I remember one night I woke up, had this urge. I just had the urge to like open up my computer. So I opened up my computer, just solved three medium problems, and I went back to sleep. And the only way for me to fall back to sleep was by solving leak code problems. It was really bad. And while, you know, in school, you know, during my junior spring and uh, senior fall semesters, um, I would solve problems while in class and not pay attention to the lecturer or not pay attention to the professor. And this got pretty bad where I kind of fell behind in class. But I think when you're doing it at the cost of leak code problems, it's not as bad because it's still enriching to the brain in a way. And ultimately, I just found leak codes to be so much more interesting. Um, in addition, I also solved the problems while on vacation. So I remembered solving problems when I was in Barcelona, in California, um, even when I was doing the Tour de Mont Blanc in France, Italy, and Switzerland. I would talk about leak code problems with my friends while we were hiking the trails. And despite having zero internet connection and zero laptop with me, we would just solve dynamic programming problems in our heads. Um, so that was really, really fun, but ultimately very nerdy of us. Like, yeah, very nerdy of us, but it was really cool. And this is how I stayed motivated during the entire process. Um, I think innately, I am a very competitive person. I've played competitive chess since sixth grade. Um, always played sports as a kid, and I always wanted to do more or to do things better. So coupled that with a, I guess, like a borderline obs obsessive personality, uh, I'm not sure if it's a disorder, but I just really get into things and I r really want to learn as much as I can and just pursue things to like even greater and greater heights, you know, whether that's cooking or photography or, or my hobbies or school or anything along that sort, I always want to push things to the next level. Um, so yeah, I think because of my competitive spirit and how I really love to do lead code, I convinced all my friends to share me their uh, lead code um, profile accounts and I would record all on a Google Doc here. So I'll share, I'll show you guys this Google Doc, but it's basically, um, I would have their name and I blacked it all out, but I would have their name, their lead code, URL link and like the amount of easy and medium hard problems that they solved and every day I would solve like maybe three to five problems and then basically try to climb this lead code leaderboard um, and then I would also take notes on like what they were doing uh, either like the previous summer or their full time offer after school so we have like you know a few Jane Street people um, quants. Uh, Google Software Engineers, at at Atlassian Software Engineering. So just very um, qualified people, to be honest. And I wanted to compete against my peers. Um, so that was really, really fun. And now is the big question. Why did I apply to zero jobs? Uh, ultimately, this is just my like inner voice saying this. But mountaineering photography is infinitely cooler than software engineering. Um, just because I think adventure in the outdoors resonates me more than, I guess, building platforms or building systems or doing front end or back end engineering. I might regret or I might change my opinion later in the future. But, you know, me being 22 years old and me being this very adventurous or curious person. I want to see the world and for now like I don't want to be chained to my you know desk and just doing some I don't know button mashing for my employer at least not right now maybe my, my opinion will change in a year so we'll see um, I also very much enjoyed solving lead code problems but I'm not sure if it matches up to the day-to-day -day work of a software engineer I visited the Google campus um, in California over the summer and from talking to the people there, it seems like a very chill lifestyle and you make really good money. But I think for me, it's just not as exciting as I want it to be. And 
Um, Mountaineering just seemed a lot more exciting to me. So we'll see. Third point, me is just, I'm just a lazy person and I don't, I don't like doing job applications. So I never really had the intrinsic motivation to apply to a job. I don't like handing in my resume. I don't like and putting my name, date of birth, all that stuff and filling out the disability forms for all these job applications. I know that this is a very stupid complaint to have, but I was just too lazy to, to even apply to jobs. So here are the resources that helped me throughout my Leco journey. Um, Necode videos are very, very helpful. I, I think whenever I got stuck on a daily problem, I would then consult with you know, Nico, um, watch his entire problem approach. My one complaint would be his videos are way too long or he, maybe he goes into the introduction or the exposition for a bit too long for my liking, but you have to know that he is, you know, making these videos for the general audience. So um, I shouldn't complain too much. Second, this is a pretty controversial take, but I think ChatGPT is very helpful with um, helping you solve problems. Or troubleshooting and I know that troubleshooting is part of the actual interview process and that you shouldn't rely on AI to do that for you but when you're solving leak code problems it's sometimes good to have or maybe after you solve the problem you can ask them like hey like was there any mistake here or how can I make this a bit more efficient or make the code a bit more clean to write um, just different little things and I, I re also really like asking about pseudocode and just helping me with like the big picture understanding of different algorithms like top of sort or graph traversal problems for lead code. Um, so yeah, I think ChatGPT is very, very helpful for this. In addition, AlgoMonster, the AlgoMonster website is really helpful. Um, I really like how they detailed the intuition, the problem approach in, for each problem that they cover. Um, and like I would often basically read over the website, read over what they said, and I'll write this down in my little iPad and just keep track of the pseudocode and then try to like memorize it and try to type it up from memory or to type it up from intuition. Um, but I recommend this, you know, t I guess tactic to everyone. Yes, but I think for me, I was a bit too fast with it or I, or I relied too much on these uh, external online resources. So I don't think my coding ability is up to par with other people who have solved a similar amount of problems. But we'll see, I'm not too sure. So here are my biggest takeaways from solving 949 leak code problems in one year. Um, I think it further instilled the self-belief that I could do hard things and learn or gain an understanding given enough time and dedication to it. Um, during this year, I also started running again and I ran a 50 miler a few months ago um, with like honestly minimal training. And I'm training for a 130 miler later this month or next month or in two months, we'll see. Um, I also learned a lot, of, a lot about myself with like, you know, my discipline and my obsessive personality. I think when you couple an obsession with discipline and you just free up a lot of time in your week or in your day, you can achieve a lot of things, whether that's like solving leak code problems or something very trivial like that, or let's say um, working out or going on a diet or you know recruiting for jobs. You you can do anything if you put your mind to it. And I think for me, leak code was a, one way to further prove that to myself of like, hey, I can solve problems day in day out, and I cannot get tired of it. So yeah. Uh, third biggest takeaway is that LeetCode is actually a really fun, I guess, platform. I never really thought about it as being fun, but uh, when I started my LeetCode leaderboard doc and I started, you know, consulting with all these other resources and just talking about LeetCode with my friends, it made the um, made the process of learning DSA problems a very, very fun and fast. So, really enjoyed that. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm very happy for my for my year. So what's next? Um, if I don't pursue mountaineering, if I, so if mountaineering photography doesn't work out, then I might pursue software engineering again. We'll see if I can break back into the industry or maybe I can recruit for consulting, finance, 
or more typical, I guess, uh, prestigious job roles for new grads. Um, or maybe I continue to pursue mountaineering photography and I start the mountaineering company and I become this mountaineering athlete just climbing mountains for the sake of it and somehow trying to make a living off of it. Um, yeah, so honestly, I don't know what the future ha like has for me. Like, I, I don't know what lies in wait for me. Um, so I just take each day one step at a time um, and just continue being curious, continue living out my passion, uh, try to be practical with like, you know, my finances and saving money and pursuing other parts of life, you know, like dating or friendships or academics or physical health and not necessarily purely mountaineering photography. Um, yeah, so anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I recorded this all in one take. Um, so yeah, this is why I solved 949 problems in one year. Ultimately, uh, it was for fun, not really for any job recruiting or anything like that. And I wish you the best in your journeys, whether you're in college or you're recruiting for a job or you're you know fresh out of college and you're looking for a job and you're trying to figure out how to do lead code or you have 10 years of experience, whatever. Um, lead code is really, really fun. It enhances your brain health, I think. And it also enhances your problem. It also enhances your problem-solving capabilities. So I would always recommend this. Um, yeah, thank you. How do I end this? Uh...